been seeking conspiracy news with salty old drunk Jedi, eh? Sure, you've come to the proper place. But keep an illuminated eye open, matey. And hold on tight to that bong. With both lips, if you please. There be chaos ahead. And skull and bonesmen waiting to assimilate them what ain't illuminated. <laughs> and mark well me words, mateys. Dead mats do tell tales. <laughs> Yes, it's log 322. Time to talk some serious conspiracy. Veiled in tales of skulls and bones. <clears throat> well, it'd be too late to alter course, mateys. You're curious, aren't you? Ha ha ha! What's the crazy bastard going to talk about today? I don't know. I got to look at my notes and find out. A lot happens in a few days, doesn't it? Boy, you turn around, you go to a lodge meeting, you, you go for the, to the gym, you go to the grocery store, you bury a few bodies, you come back and all hell's broken loose in the world. Well... You're in the proper place. We got the tavern with libations to help the news go down with easy. Spoonful of sugar is fine. I prefer a big keg full of booze. It helps much more. Um, if you listened to last log, I gave you the quick tour. You know, the wrestling ring and the hall of shame. I guess I should build a pirate's ride as well and... Um, and the church, the church of what's happening now. Oh, wait a second. We got that. The tavern, the lodge. So since you're already here and I'm already buzzed and I've already got my notes open, let's see what's happening now. Well, <clears throat> somebody sure, uh, kicked over a beehive, stirred up a shit storm over in Syria, didn't they? Uh, and everyone is even is freaking out even more. Of course, I'm talking about the so-called chemical attack. So-called. I'm not even going to look into the the, uh, the the usual conspiracy parameters of ins and outs. Did people really die? Who done it? All I need to understand is the timing. Trump wants to leave. This happens. Um, oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's not what it seems. And Trump knows more than we do. And you know what, though? People lose faith so quickly. I, all I can think about in this whole situation is not so much the particulars, the nuts and bolts of the whatever's happening. Other people will dissect that. I don't need to waste my energy on it. The bigger picture is what concerns me. And in that bigger picture, morale is a dimension many people overlook or they do not see. This is about uh, forcing Trump into a situation that makes his constituents and his supporters question him. More than anything, I think. Because it's already doing, it's already having that effect. People lose faith so quickly. Need I remind everyone that for nearly three years now, on a daily basis, sometimes more than once a day, 
some something is a, uh, a Trump is accused of something, and every time, with a record of over a thousand and O oh now, the man has always come through clean. Yo, ye of little faith. Don't question the man till all is over. He knows more than you do, and he's been right when you've been wrong so many times, those of you judging him. Those of you reserving judgment, I applaud you. That's how you win wars. You have faith in your team, and you don't cower at the first sign of uh, casualties and, you know, in, in an information war when, oh no, it looks like something finally happened. People are so quick to prove how fair weather they are, aren't they? Back to the primaries, the loyalty pledge. Oh, he signed it. He's not going to be independent. He's just working for the GOP. Oh, yeah, he took over the GOP. And he still has that loyalty pledge for leverage. Not that he ever needs to use it. He got the presidency. But that just shows how good he is. He leaves, He has cards he doesn't even need to play. Because he's so damn good at working people. The deal. And a year ago, when this... Bullshit happened almost exactly the same. And Trump bombed the airfield. Everyone, oh my God, he's going to bomb everyone into oblivion. See, he's a warmonger. Blah. And I said, no. He did that as a calculated move because President Z was visiting him at Mar-a-Lago. And that was a display of power, which has since paid big dividends. Kim Jong-un knows that Trump doesn't fuck around. And I said it would have that effect. You watch, we're going to have peace talks with, you know, Trump shows that he's willing to blow him up. And people are like, oh my God, he's not a pussy like Obama and Bush. I mean, he's going to actually do it. Well, now Kim Jong-un's willing to belly up to the table, if he can reach, and uh, look over those uh, peace treaties, you know. And then Trump didn't need to, and I said, Trump's only going to bomb what this make this display of power and then that's it he's not going to send a whole bunch of we're not going to go rolling in there and we didn't but people so quick to forget that they were so quick to abandon trump oh my god see he's going to bomb them all no he made a show of strength and that's all he needed to do and now everyone's just rushing to judge him again and lose faith again i'm not i'm folding my arms across my chest right here not that you can see it on the microphone and i'm just saying you know Wolf, 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 wow! Tired of it. I stand by my commander-in-chief. He's earned the benefit of the doubt until he is grossly proven otherwise. Multiple times. He has earned so much credibility at this point. He could fuck up once, twice, and I would still hold on because, you know, hey, he's, he's done so well so far. He'd have to fuck up spectacularly three times in a row now for me to even begin to question him. I have confidence the man has a plan. Everything else we've wanted, we're getting. Not quite the way we saw it coming, but hey, you gotta fool the, the deep state. You gotta fool the bad guys, too. Yeah. But that's why you have people like me to translate. Well myself and the cosmos but I'm the messenger so I guess translator is the same thing yeah. they translate cosmic purpose into mortal political discourse it's a tough translation hence the pauses in the um, in the puffs right. now and I have to say about this whole chemical thing of uh, in Syria, not to make light of the suffering and the dead, but you see how they're playing on your emotions? The, the footage of the children. Uh, this is like Iraq, 1990. With ink babies uh, pulled out of incubators and put on the floor. Boo! And then we all go rushing off to do the New World Order's bidding. It's chemical weapons are horrendous, but people die in horrific ways all the time. Sometimes it's hard to think of anything worse than a, a sarin gas or a, a chemical attack. 
But, yeah, it's horrible. But, you know, people that work in industry, firefighters get burned alive. People that work in industrial meals get chewed up by the machines. A lot of people are just get a slow death of many years by drugs or whatever. You want to talk chemical attack? How about all, everyone dying of cancer from all the GMOs and fluoride and chemtrails? How about all the hundreds of millions of Americans dying from chemtrail exposure? How come no one's up all in arms about that? Because it's not concentrated into a short attention span, little soundbite of people wailing on and graphic footage on TV. Ah, oh, we're dying. Ah. If that pulls on the heartstrings and then people don't think and they abandon Trump and they forget the bigger picture and the larger game of what's going on. Not me. It helps in some ways to have your heart ripped out over your life so you don't need to care. You don't feel so much. You can look at things. I can be the Vulcan. I can look at things like Mr. Spock and just look at things logically. Although... Yeah, I'm too emotional for a Vulcan. But you get the point. Um, for the whole, uh, whatever's going on in Syria, as I always say, my rule, the rule of Punisher, look to who benefits. Who benefits from this? The New World Order, the Nazi World Order. They want chaos. They want war. The Bonesmen want death. I don't think... Assad had anything to do with it. Quite, I mean, obviously, that's a consensus out there. But the, the real question is, why is Trump falling for it? Why is Trump... He's not! He's playing the game. Don't everyone be so quick to judge the man. See what happens first. You're all so quick to judge him a year ago, and you're all wrong. Well, except for me. <clears throat> I'm not so quick to rush to judgment. Um, now shifting gears a little bit, but staying on topic as well. The midterms are coming up. They're trying to break morale against Trump and his constituents when that occurs so they can regain control. The new world Nazi world order doesn't give a shit about the lives of anyone in Syria. They don't care about Syria at all, except as a uh, um, a tool. They care about the power of America. They want Trump gone. Yeah, they're willing to start war in Syria just to change, to work their dark magic on the public mind to try and uh, chip away at Trump's base so when the midterms come they can get their power back. That's what they're all about. Uh... Don't let them remember them uh, during the primaries about how everyone just said, fuck it. We want change. We're going to get, we're not listening to the old ways anymore. We're not going to give in and go back. Do not make the mistake of the Exodus. When they got to the base of Mount Sinai and they're like, oh, oh let's go back. Let's make the golden calf and bribe our way back into Pharaoh's heart. And then Moses came down and said, Damn you, blam! And all, you know. And then, the, and then we got Raiders of the Lost Ark out of it. The ark. The Hebrews took the broken pieces and put them in the ark. And blah, blah, blah. And then Freemasonry picks it up thousands of years later and along comes me, the heir of the mill with the Raiders hat. And the, yeah. I think I had a point in there. Some, oh, yeah. Uh, let's borrow from Indy a little bit. Don't look at it, Marion. <laughs> Shut your eyes. Don't look at it no matter what happens. I'm referring to the bullshit propaganda of the mainstream media and anyone out there spreading fear. We're in a day and age when fear does not cut the mustard. I'm sorry. Fear is a currency I do not trade in in this exciting apocalyptic day and age. Give me courage. Give me logic. Give me reason. But fear, uh-uh. That money's no good here. Not at, nope. If Trump goes into Syria with a big army, 
I don't see that happening. But if that, no, nah, I don't see it happening. I see a few months more of all this uh, bizarre, uh, much better than television entertainment going on until uh, those midterms come up. And I think around that time we're going to see some very damning video come out about Hillary and um, let's just what what was that executive order Trump signed on Christmas for me solstice human trafficking <laughs> Raiders of the Lost Ark let's go back to the uh, to the beginning when they're talking to the government guys we got some information here we can't make anything out of it and maybe you can uh, executive order proceeding human trafficking asset forfeiture pizza gate us <laughs> where do you think it's going they're not going after money they're not going after drugs they're going after sex and human traffickers that's the language why do you think they're all panicking Um, I'm not panicking. I'm anxious. But I'm not panicking. I've been here too long. Tens of thousands of years. Many lifetimes, and I've seen it too many times. Separating the wheat from the chaff as the storm winds pick up. We'll see who has courage and who gives in to fear. These are, trust me, I have been alive many times that I can remember, much less those I can't remember. But my soul can, my DNA can. There will always be those that have yet to learn to go on to cycles later as a higher soul. They learn this time around. But those of you who have been around before, now's the time. These are the most exciting times in many 10Ks. This is an incredible time to be incarnate on this rock. This is the main event. Don't choke. Back to that thought a moment ago. I don't want to let that slip away. I'm always talking about how the all water in the cosmos is connected. We know this scientifically now, that all water has a way to communicate with itself. So my beer here is connected to the Arctic Ocean, the Metachlorians, gazillions, zillions of them. And our DNA can talk to them all. That, that is the grail blood secret. We can all talk to God by accessing our Metachlorians. It really is. But what about past lives? You're not in the same body, the same bloodline, if your soul goes around, your consciousness goes from here to there, right? Wrong. Your soul is a frequency, an energy, in, in a very loose sense. It's an abstract thing. It could be whatever. Your essence, your consciousness, we don't quite know what it is. But I'm willing to bet everything that your consciousness, once incarnate in a flesh and blood body with plenty of water, metachlorians and etc can tap into those on an energetic level and simply communicate and access the cosmic hard drive everywhere the cosmic internet i should say everywhere of what your past body was and just sort of remember okay i'm in this new body a thousand miles away from where i died a hundred years ago but hey all water all blood talks if your soul can hit that vibration and just download my my last life into this blood okay uh-huh immortality is not so unattainable unattainable what is this legend of the holy grail drink and live forever ah ah 
All right, and back to the political news. I, I'm sorry, i got to talk about important things here. Ooh, politics. Let's talk about the important stuff. <clears throat> What's up next? Oh, yeah. Um, well, everyone's favorite Borg, Zuckerborg, is in court today. And everyone's picking on him for looking hu inhuman, but I've already done that, so I can move on to... Okay, so Facebook is in court. Just after they censored Diamond and Silk. Bravo. Wait a minute. Are they that fucking dumb? Is Facebook's AI out algorithms out of control? Or are their egos out of control? Or is, are they that dumb? Or, rule of punisher. Who benefits? There's some talk that Mueller and others are sort of kind of on Trump's side. I don't think so. I think those people are scum. But you got to wonder, Zuckerberg cut a deal with Trump to save his ass. At some point, I keep waiting to see who's going to cut a deal, who's going to see the writing on the wall that Trump, you know, the good guys are going to win and the bad guys, the old, the old guard, the big club is going down. Some people are going to go down with it and some people are going to be wise enough to say you know what okay here's where we're guilty i'll give you what i know i'll throw myself at the mercy of the court of public opinion blah blah i don't know where zuckerberg falls in that i think he's a worm but <clears throat> maybe he's at least an intelligent worm would putting down diamond and silk right before these hearings be the just pushing it enough the final straw so that it gives it gives them enough, the, the, pub, the court of public opinion, enough evidence to, to hang them, whatever, to break up. To, the slingstone to Goliath, David's slingstone. You can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a giant. you got to find a way to win. The deep state, the big corporations, they're, they're giants. You can't go straight up against them. you got to find some weak point. Smog the dragon had the one scale gone. You got to find some way to get in and take him down. Tax evasion to Al Capone, wiretapping to Nixon and Sotaro, and so on. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think the Facebook could be that damn stupid as to put you know censor Diamond and Silk, given how friendly they are to Trump. And uh, was that done deliberately to help bring Facebook down for some reason? Maybe not, but I'm just throwing the question out there. Uh, on Facebook, though, on a personal note, I want to say. Um, bumpy PTS road coming up, fair warning. Uh, my old friends, whom I call Zoe Feist for a number of reasons, amongst them legal reasons. You backstabbing pieces of shit. Circa 2011 and 12, when I came back from Hollywood, talking about all the pedophiles and rapists and Satanists there. Yeah, 2011. They all dismissed me as crazy and destroyed my life. A lot of it through Facebook, and I protested saying, wait a second, I didn't unfriend you, I didn't say this, I didn't do it. Oh yeah, you're just making it up, Matt, conspiracy theory. Oh yeah, well in 2014 it came out about the 700K experiment and the social experiment. Everything that's coming out in court now. Seven years ago, my friends, you were no better than the Nazis. And they came for the Jews and they didn't say anything. And you let me, my family, be taken away to the fucking gulag, metaphorically but no less destroyed a family because you were cowards and wouldn't look. Well, it doesn't matter what happens at the, ev at the end of the court trial to Zuckerberg. The evidence has already come out in the proceedings. I was telling the truth seven years ago, and all of you betrayed me. I won't name names here, but let's narrow the field of suspects. Dead Gentleman Productions. There are people more than I can count on one hand in that group directly that have blood on their hands and at Disney and at AFI and some personal friends 
You owe my family more than you can ever repay in this lifetime. Don't think I won't be coming one day to collect. Not with a sword. And not with a staff. Something in between. Let's see, what have I used before as a metaphor? A lightsaber. Knowledge and defense. Truth is on my side. I was patient and suffered for years, and now vindicated. I will be coming with the Cardusha's staff to throw at your feet, Pharaoh. But you will probably recoil in fear as if from a serpent. Because that's what you are. Every one of you, Zoe Feist. Cowards. Traitors. Murderers. I think I've had enough booze. So let's have some more. You like that logic? Yeah, I'm not a Vulcan. But remember, for all those years when I had no vindication, I still acted only in knowledge and defense. Never attack. I will be coming with... Justice. I'll leave it at that for now. Um, now back to Trump for a moment. I have this in my notes, so I guess I should mention it. The last log that I am talked about that f mysterious fire in Trump Tower on the 50th floor. And uh, my assessment was comparing it to Ivanka's recent helicopter trouble. Basically a warning to Mr. T. You are, your family is touchable. If Trump plays ball with Syria, I wonder if that's why. Did they get to, did they threaten Ivanka? Did they, did something, what, who, that fire in his tower, what happened? Now, I don't think so. I think Trump is, I wonder if it's going to come to some point where they call that bluff, where they'll kill Ivanka, and instead of um, castrating Trump by doing so, they'll fucking swell the size of his balls, and he'll go after him with a vengeance. That's what I don't think they reckon with. Because they only think in terms of what they would do, and they're cowards. They would buckle. They don't reckon with free spirits like Trump or myself. I think like Trump. Uh, we're more American. We're willing to take you down with us, motherfuckers. You know, we'll go down with the ship. We'll go down fighting. Marines don't die. They just go to hell to regroup. You know, uh, that American spirit. Uh, Roddy Piper at the end of They Live is dying act, flipping him off. Fuck you! You know, they, the cowards that have been in control for so long, the manipulators, the deceivers, by their very nature, they just don't understand that. They don't factor that into their calculations, and maybe that will be their poetic flaw. Their undoing. Like, in every classic tale, take Lord of the Rings. You know, Gandalf advised Sauron will not understand anyone not wishing to use the ring because that's not his way. It's not within his heart. He'll wait for one of us to use it and be powerful, and therefore he won't notice us sneaking in because he won't understand humble, humility, hobbit ways, simpler ways. I dare say biblical ways. But, uh, such as the advantage of the virtuous. We don't have the advantage of the great armies and the ability to lie and manipulate, but you know what we have? We have the advantage of courage and perseverance, and that's what wins in the end. That's what won the War of Independence with the Founding Fathers. We didn't win the battles against the British, we just endured. 
sometimes that's what you have to do. Sometimes for seven years. Um, yeah. And now things are changing rapidly. I sense a change in the wind, says I. Uh, ooh, what am I smelling on the winds? That's smoke. And where there's smoke, there's fire. Oh, I should have had my bong reloaded for that. But let me just give you um, a word to think about for a moment. Epstein. Oh, yeah, if you've heard, you know where I'm going with this. It seems Jeffrey Epstein's private island is having some serious renovation. Maybe he's putting in a new pool. You know, the weight of all that water, you have to fill those tunnels, right? So the land doesn't give way. It's a small island. You don't want to see the, water, the ocean breaking through. You know, why is he filling tunnels and then burning the place down? Uh, destroying evidence, maybe? Gee... <clears throat> survey said one answer um, the top one answer is on the board <laughs> I just don't even need to give thought to that um, <clears throat> so I'll just give smoke to that hey Epstein you want to burn the evidence and God knows any human v captive still there This is where it's nice not to have a heart because I warned everyone seven years ago and my friends, you didn't fucking listen to me. The blood's on your hands, motherfuckers. Film people that could have raised an alarm, didn't want to listen. <sighs> not my bloody monkeys, not my bloody fucking circus. I'm just in the audience for now. Um, next up, I want to talk about Lionel. Lionel's wandered into the bar. How you doing, Lionel? Come on in. Now, Lionel is one of those losing faith in Trump. He's a good example because he's so intelligent. I mean, he really is. I, my vocabulary always benefits from listening to Lionel. And he's clearly been in the game a long time. He's on media on all sides. He's a very respectable individual in these conversations, these thoughts, his conspiratorium, and so on and so forth. But even he is uh, showing his poker face. Questioning whether Trump is buckling on, on the Syria thing. Well, I, I thought that Lionel would be like, Ah, they went through this last year. Trump, he didn't give in then. He's not going to give in now. But Lionel, yeah, you're losing faith. Don't. And uh, maybe... maybe Take it from the macho man, the greatest of all time, yeah. You can even tell it to the American dream, Dusty Rhodes, who I put down in less than three minutes, yeah, three minutes at SummerSlam 1990, yeah. Take it easy, Lionel. Mellow out, man, mellow out. Trump's got it in bag, Trump's got it. Got it covered, yeah. Mellow out, my man. All right. Now, uh, what's up? Oh, I have to give props to extreme narcissism. He talks about the Epstein Island thing with his, uh, his puppet, and he's hilarious. <laughs> I didn't link Chumapa 
but I, I uh, but he's finding his stride with these puppets i used to do puppets i can appreciate puppets i did hand puppets back in second third and fourth grade i put on puppet shows a mixture of chuck e cheese and weird al and i put on puppet shows for my grade schools and you know i know all about the elevated sore tired arm from holding up a puppet but he's he's funny and he's brutal that's what I really like. I mean, oh, when I was watching him talk about Epstein Island and the burning kids, I mean, OB George Carlin Ovi was over here. Carlin Ovi? Is that like his evil uh, um, Italian... Uh, it's like the, the Jedi Mafia. Yeah, his evil twin brother. No, OB George Carlin Ovi was laughing his ass off. It's like Red Letter Media. I like brutal humor in a way not grotesque but or or uh you know i'm but just unapologetic politically incorrect humor and if you think i should have said politically incorrect well that would be politically correct the politically incorrect statement is politically incorrect uh mary mary on birthday to me to you uh mary mary big bong poof to me boop boop Anyway, I agree with extreme narcissism. He shares my sentiments. <sighs> or I share his, or something like that. It's my tavern. He shares mine. But when you're watching him, he, 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 uh, I'm sharing his because you'd be there. See how f consciousness is what it's all about. Where you are is what matters and not what it, what is, is a so-called physical reality. Uh All right. Oh, now we're getting to some some heavy. Okay, we're finishing up the political stuff here, but man, are we finishing it up with something noteworthy? This is a milestone. I'm very serious. Alex Jones and Infowars crew, uh, Rob Dew, Leanne McAdoo, and crew. Woo! at the press club in Washington, D.C. for a full two hours uh, of full open mic. That is historic. I mean, when, when Alex Jones was going there, I was like, oh man, they're actually going to let him talk or they're going to give him 10 minutes or something. And then I see uh, the link. Oh my God, it's two hours. Nah, it's going to be like one of those speeches where there's like 45 minutes of what, you couldn't cut this off or, or put a, a start time? No, you just let it roll. I have to look for it. No, it's like three minutes in, three minutes and seven seconds in. It starts up, and it's over two hours of Alex Jones and crew doing a, a press club. I said, wow. Now, uh, my review of it. First of all, Alex... Jones he made a good showing for himself people are going to say he got too crazy and animated and you know too much like he is on on his show no that's what works lest we forget his interview on Piers Morgan Stalin took the guns Mao took the guns you know and then a few months later Piers Morgan was gone and Alex Jones is at the press club. Or, need a better example? Trump. The over-the-top bravado, the, the, the crazy comic book character, it works with people. Like it or not, it resonates with people. It works. Hulk Hogan might not have been the greatest wrestler, but when he twirled his hand and leaned into the ropes and listened to the audience, they cheered the roof, or they blew the roof off, brother. Um, they understand this. It's funny that people keep falling for it. It's like the primaries all over again. They got to be serious about it. They're not going to get anywhere. Well, yeah, well, Trump won. What do you think of that? 
and he didn't tone down the goofy rhetoric at all. So Alex Jones, I thought, made a great showing for himself. A lot of times he got very um, friendly with the audience. He wasn't trying to... He, I'm sure they coached themselves on the way there and in the hotel. They talked over and over about what to do and what not to do. Roger Stone was probably uh, the referee or the, you know, listen, this is what we need to do. And they probably... T I. If I were them, I would have deferred to Roger Stone. But whoever they decided... Whatever their huddle, their football huddle was or whatever, it worked. Here's what they deci clearly decided to do. Alex Jones was not telling everyone how dumb they are. He was being friendly and he offered himself up on a... Um, he humiliated himself. He called himself the frog and, you know, I'm a fat gay frog and all that. I mean, he, he humiliated himself. That works with people. He was smart to do that. It's like um, the most macho men, no offense, Randy, but like um, in wrestling, take, for example, The Rock or Jesse Ventura. Both of these guys did something very similar where they made fun of themselves. Um, they didn't, they had so much security so much self-confidence they didn't mind laughing at themselves Arnold Schwarzenegger used to be very good at that he, he could make fun of himself you know people appreciate that it makes them comfortable it allows them to accept m things they might not normally it makes them both comfortable and curious they want a little bit more and then Alex Jones and company were wise not to go too far they didn't bring up 9-11 they didn't bring up Bilderberg they didn't bring up anything like that they stuck to things people could easily put in their phone and Google like George Soros um, and his funding of the Antifa things like that and hard, follow the money hard data they got them curious and comfortable and then they gave them easily researchable data you don't need to tell everyone like a priest from the pulpit or i dare say moses from mount sinai you must okay i wish i had a camera right now for once i wish i had a camera so i could point at it like randy savage where he cocks his finger like a gun and twinks his pinky and he points at you you uh, must believe you know like the fear of god you must believe in 9 11 or you're an idiot well, that's not going to work with people. But if you say, I'm the gay fat frog, blah, blah, and the audience in the press club's like, ha, 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 you know, okay, they're going along with it. And then he says, look, George Soros is funding these things. And people can say, oh, yeah, well, I'll just fact check that. Well, holy shit, he's right. Infowars connected with people at a critical time. Their first foray into the, the mainstream, the, the DC press club, the big boys. And they left people with two hours of data and nothing that they could really take away to make fun of them none of no one none of those professional media went away th believing what the mainstream says about alex jones they went away with questions that was good that was that was very important i don't think people realize how important that press club is and will be until years from now that was important. That was a milestone. That was historic. And I am just happy that McAdoo is there because I like looking at her. I got a crush on Macaboobs. I mean, I like those Texas cheekbones and I like the tough athletic woman. Um, yeah. She was nervous. Oh, I felt bad for her, though. She was so nervous up there. You could hear how fast she was talking. And... Um, some people are just not good up in front of a, a crowd like that. It's it's like I think I said... Uh, no, no, I was listening to something else. Um, but she soldiered through it. She didn't choke. She wanted out of there, but she bra she saw it through. So I, good for her. I wanted to say that's an act, but I think that was real. She was just nervous. But if it was an act, it was well done because she played the pity card. People felt sorry for her. Oh, big mean Soros is suing everyone, including this frightened little girl who's just trying to be a reporter. I don't think she was acting. I think she was genuinely nervous, but that it helped. I think if she came up there as this sassy, 
overly confident Megan Kelly type, it would have turned people off by being this timid, you know, I'm just trying to be a reporter and tell the truth. And the fact that she's, you know, incredibly attractive, uh, yeah, damsel in distress. It works with people too. Roger Stone, did you really think all this out? I mean, this is, was this all a work? No, I, I think it was real. Alex Jones, for whatever people say about Alex Jones, and I have friends who don't, who think Alex Jones is crooked, and uh, they, some people I th think he's Bill Hicks. I don't think so. I don't, on the Bill Hicks thing for a moment, I've looked into that years ago. You know, Leon McAdoo looks like some people I've known from Texas, some women I've known from Texas. Alex Jones and uh, Bill Hicks look a lot alike, sound a lot alike. You know, and there's that 1996 changeover date. I get it. But I don't think that anyone could have kept up the charade for 22 years. I've listened to a lot of Alex Jones. I've never heard him break character, so to speak. He gets so worked up, you can see the blood vessels throbbing in his head. And I think Alex Jones really believes everything he says. Even if what he says all isn't accurate all the time, he believes it. I don't think it's an act. I don't think if it was an act, you could keep it up for 22 years. No, it, it would have fallen apart long ago. No, I, um, it's like Obama, whenever he slips up and calls Michelle Michael which he's done multiple times. Alex Jones has never slipped it back into Bill Hicks. He's never, if some, if he has someone, please send me a clip. I'd like to see it, but I've never seen him break character accidentally or otherwise. It just, he believes it too much. You can see it, like I said, in the veins throbbing in his forehead. He, <laughs> uh, personally, I think Alex Jones needs to smoke some dope, but um, uh, he probably... He probably goes home and sneaks. He's got a stash of hash at home, you know. But uh, he's not going to tell anyone. That'd be bad for his, uh, his his conservative base, to use very polite terms. I'm, I'm picking on Alex Jones here. I'm not going to pick on anyone else at the moment. Actually, I'm just, I'm vindicating Alex Jones, aren't I? I'm defending him. I'm saying he's legit. Oh, well, I'm stunned. I'm happy. What did you say? Am I happy? Did I actually let that word escape my mouth? See, even I fucked up and broke character. See, no one can f keep that poker face up for decades. Um, um, yeah. I think that just about does it for the political. Now it's on to the fun stuff, the paranormal, and then my pet peeves for the dessert. But there's some very interesting paranormal stuff to talk about. Not going into outer space this time. Sorry, Macho. You can stay at the tavern and drink. Uh, now, this one's staying on Earth. We're, we're going indie style. Get your hat and your whip ready. Time to go down into the earth. Into the dusty catacombs of history and legend and lore. And when you're going with me, synchronicity is what we shall see. Wee 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 Sense it's the log of skull and bones, and we got to talk Indiana Jones. Which I guess is me, realistically. 
I got the hat. I've earned it. And now I'm using it. The uh, last few logs I've hinted at something I'm not going to go into. I'm doing many things. But as the Masons, like Marcus Brody, said to me, they want you to go for it. Much has changed. Like I've said in recent logs also, Ryan Johnson doesn't write my life. <clears throat> Coming down off that mountain soon. Just getting my lightsaber ready. Luke in the cave before Jabba's palace, you know, getting it tuned up. Getting the kyber crystals aligned properly. Reflecting on what must be done. When Jabba's palace was only one of many steps on that journey. But my journey has many interesting steps or stops along the way. And since we're talking Indiana Jones, well, there's so much to go over. But basically, synchronicity gave me what I needed. I'm serving a higher purpose in my current craftsmanship. and knowledge that I would need to do it right and on time, as in by May or June's stated meeting. If you're listening, brothers, this will make sense. In Lodge, come May or June, you will see what I mean. But years of research have been handed to me within days from a variety of sources. Links I will provide below but also discussion in Lodge. For example, talking about the Ark of the Covenant, one of many things to do with what I'm working on, and very important to Masonry. I just turned to an old firefighter friend of my father, who happens to be a Mason. What is depicted on the side of the Ark of the Covenant? Well, no one really knows, but what would be there, do you think? Hebrew writing, what would it say? Well, I won't go into what he told me, but as soon as I come home, there's a link from, I don't know why I'm subscribed to this channel, I don't recall subscribing to it, but it's a, I think he's a rabbi, I'm not sure, he's definitely Jewish, but he's going over the, um, the Hebrew language. And how it's in a codex for, shall we say, sacred geometry, universal constants, DNA, the language of the Metachlorians, perhaps. How other languages come out of it. And I've never really looked into Hebrew much. You only have so many years in a lifetime to study. So, I haven't gotten to it yet, but here I am now. Got a lot of years left. And I'm going to use them as best I can. But, uh, what he talks about it was sent to me, it was necessary. And I'll say what he talks about in the first 10 minutes of that link is what was most profound for me. But if you, I recommend listening to the whole link. Uh, a few things I'd like to point out about uh, this guy breaking down the Hebrew language and its uh, many use, uh, many um, applications outside of language to the cosmos and how everything is mathematically precise it's a 
divine creation that we're in. A grand architect's work, indeed. Not a matter of accident or chance, or as Obi-Wan would say, in my experience, there's no such thing as luck. That gets into synchronicity. There's no coincidence. Anyway, some things he brings up that I thought were very interesting. Um, first of all, the letters themselves, if uh, getting into the meaning, basically he backs up what I said cryptically esoterically in my latest Raiders of the Lost Ark commentary, the esoteric one, commentary 101. Esoteric 101, starting with masonry, the mystery schools might as well. But what the Ark is, or what Belloc might argue, Jones, do you realize what the Ark is? It's a transmitter. It's a radio for speaking to God. And it is within your reach. It's in your blood. Everyone can talk to God. You just got to look inward, reflect, not outward. No golden calves in your circle, your pineal gland, spiritual. Everything external is just fortune and glory, kid. Or as Joan Sr. said, Elsa thought she found a prize. What did you find, Dad? Me. Illumination. Cue music. So... What he talks, what the Hebrew letters he goes into talk about is basically the same thing. You are God if you act like and reflect him, her, source. And the Ark is symbolic of the temple of the soul of man, Solomon. That's why it was in the temple of Solomon, built for the Ark. House within a house, but the ultimate house is yourself. And the Ark's construction... <laughs> Why that it's gold it's not made of gold it's sheathed in gold because gold is an external thing golden calf false pursuit yes it was necessary to function as an electrical capacitor or whatever it was actually you know ancient alien technology or whatever the hell it really whatever the heaven it really was is but um a radiation shield for a meteorite whatever is inside but um I would argue the whole story is whether the Ark exists or not, whether it's in Ethiopia or wherever it is, Roslyn Chapel or whatever. It is, the story is more important um, because it's reflecting the human incarnation. The Ark itself is built of acacia wood. Acacia, the plant for all psychedelic shaman, ayahuasca, Uh huh. So his his 101 on Hebrew really does tell me my esoteric commentary was was on track. I can't wait to do the third. I'm going to do a third for each. <laughs> I have to get to the second. If I'm going to do three degrees for in, the Indi for each of the Indies, I'm going to do three degrees. Normal commentary, esoteric commentary, then later on, years from now, a master's commentary. What else can you say? Oh, there's more to say. There's always more to say. Only the fool thinks they've discovered everything in this world. The journey is ongoing. Now, uh, some other things, interesting things that's brought up in this breakdown of the Hebrew uh, let characters and how they have esoteric meanings people have never considered. Consider these. A few numbers that pop up over and over. 11. 33. <laughs> And not 44, but 44 twice over for some reason. Which to me spells 88, like the DNA, the double helix. The Rosalind Pillar, the Holy Grail. You see? Um, another interesting number that comes up 
in a very specific context, unlike the others which are applicable to many contexts. They're universal. They're code keys. Like I said, nothing external. Darth Vader is a folly. The real power is within. It's in your blood. You, God is within everyone and everything. All you have to do is access. And if you think it's an external thing, well, you're a Borg. I'm a Jedi. Anyway, interesting number that pops up. 26. What? 26? Apparently it was an important number to the Hebrews. I don't know why, but I'm just wondering, was it any accident that the submarine used by the Nazis that stole the Ark at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, the towards the end anyway, when the, the Nazi submarine in the Raiders of the Lost Ark is number 26? Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to record a master's commentary at some point after I study Hebrew language or something. Then I'll talk about what the Ark what the Auk is. Didn't I just explain what it is? Well, yeah, I'll go into that too, but hey, you got a preview of two years ahead. But there's always more to tell. There will be much more to tell. Uh, synchronously, there's something from Brother Randall Carlson. He doesn't post links often, but here is one. And what's he talking about? Brother Randall Carlson, for those that don't know, hangs with Graham Hancock, who I've studied for over 20 years. Graham Hancock, who became famous for his book, The Sign and the Seal, where he located the Ark of the Covenant, he believes, and I believe him, in Ethiopia. He's my source there. I found Graham Hancock because of Fingerprints of the Gods and followed his work after that, but the sign and the seal predated Fingerprints of the Gods. Anywho, his current running buddy, Brother Randall Carlson, who's up here in Oregon, I'm hoping to hook up with him one day. Uh, if anyone's listening, I volunteer Brother Randall Carlson, Brother Mason. Uh, we're, I think he said on Joe Rogan he's a 32nd degree, so we're equal there. Hey, we're both 32nd. We can all talk about the same stuff. We don't, you know, nothing forbidden there and I'd volunteer to just be an assistant on one of his expeditions where he and Graham go out to the canyons and photograph that stuff you know I'll I'll be the driver I'll be the water boy whatever I'll just be happy to hang and rap with you for a few hours or whatever a few days uh, but anyway he's rapping here about the moon and the sun and the actual distances and how they break down in ancient, you know, astrology and numerology and stuff. Let's not forget that the moon is Moses, Mises, the water, the water. Moses, born of the water, and uh, he's most he's best known for the water at the end. You know, the whole parting of the seas, the two halves of the brain. Uh, God's nostrils. Uh -huh. What's behind him? The pineal gland, Moses, the light. Anyway, he's talking about the... Uh, and in the last log, if you listen to the uh, links, Graham Hancock had a thing where he was talking about the ark and how it was being carried on the poles, being reminiscent of a boat born on the water as the ark was carried down the Nile to Ethiopia long ago. As Indy said, all of a sudden, whoosh, it was gone. And nobody knows where or when. Maybe we do. And is that where they got the idea of the Ark of Noah's Ark later? The boat on the water? Is that like Excalibur? Two swords become one, Lady in the Lake, and then the Sword in the Stone. Somehow it's the same sword. What the fuck? We got another boat where that which will survive is born aloft above the water while that which is ignorant and must be destroyed and cast into darkness is drowned under the water just like Atlantis all those that didn't get on all the animals that didn't get on Noah's Ark and all those destroyed by the Ark of the Covenant same story in a way 
the golden boat, the ark, or the gold of knowledge, or those animals alive, the good things, borne aloft above the waters. Moses comes on top of the water. The crocodile, representing ignorance, is that which lurks underneath. That's why it's brought up in the film when Moses is fetched from the water. DeMille knew to put that in there, because DeMille was a mason, and he knows this shit. Uh, anyway, Carl, Brother Carlson is bringing up about the moon and the sun and the distances and how the moon is artificial. He doesn't say that, but he hints at it, how it's so unique in its uh, location, its distance, and <laughs> its orbit to uh, create an uh, eclipse. But he talks about the number being, can you guess? One... Eight, 108, but 1-8. So that's a sacred number too, huh? Like 1188. I don't know quite what it means, but the context he brings it up in is basically illumination, breaking through the barriers of the matrix, breaking on through to the other side. The Kyber Stargate, 1188. I feel like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters sculpting mashed potatoes. I don't know quite what it means, but I know it means something. It's important. It's the key. The octagon. The octagon. Frequency and vibration is everything, so said Tesla, the smartest man in history. You find that vibration, you can remake this matrix as you see fit. <sighs> so, synchronicity is with me, I dare say. Next link I want to talk about amongst the paranormal is another weird one that was landed in my lap all of a sudden as I'm getting ready to, re to make the... Uh, I hope in the next week or two to get a quiet time where I can sit down and record the esoteric commentaries for Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, and Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Although I'm in no big hurry because there's always more lore being landed in my lap to fill in the gaps where I don't have something to talk about already. And I was amongst parts of the last crusade i was thinking well maybe i can talk about templar stuff you know here and there but such as during the castle brunwald sequence nope here comes this link that this is an interesting legend i didn't know about this here's a preview if i don't get to the esoteric commentaries for a while here's a preview i'm gonna pronounce this wrong on purpose Wee Wielsborg Castle. I think it's pronounced Vivelsborg Castle, but since I only Jessica will get this, but Jessica, just in case you're listening, Wee Wee Woo Woo. Never stopped loving you, Mary and Ravenwood. They weren't you, honey. But, um, Vivelsborg Castle. Seat of the SS, the dreaded dungeon of doom of the Nazi, um, the, the scum of the scum, I mean, maybe that's what SS stands for, the scum of the scum, I don't know, uh, the place sure looks a lot like Castle Brunwald in Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, it has a very interesting history. Let me see if I can re uh, cover all the points. First of all, being the seat of the SS, I mean, it may, it may as well be Vivelsborg Castle in Last Crusade, where they kept Dr. Jones Sr. captive. Because it basically is it's crawling with SS. That's all that was going on there, although there's lots of castles with Nazis in them during that time, but... Uh, I guess they had to put it on the Austrian-German border so they could make a getaway in the story, but, uh, well, Vivelsborg Castle was not exactly near the border. But, uh, whatever. 
splitting hairs there. My point going into this is Spielberg knew things before the public knew them. Such as the whole legend of this castle uh, is based around a, a grail. A holy grail. Well, holy shit, how about that? In the movie about Indiana Jones going after the holy grail, he puts a castle in there exactly like this with the legend of a grail. Now the thing is about this grail is... Uh, it wasn't found. They found a, a, a big golden uh, cauldron in the moat or in the lake nearby the castle. But it's been proven to be a Nazi forgery. It was a propaganda thing. They made it as part of their whole Aryan master race. Look, we found this relic, blah, blah, blah. But it was lost. It was part of one of the treasures the Nazis dumped and no one knew anything about it. Until 2001 when it was found. And then it was examined and proven to be a forgery and blah, blah, blah. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was released 12 years prior. How did Spielberg... Well, it's kind of a coincidence. The castle... There's more. It's one of the most agonizing scenes in Indiana Jones canon. But Spielberg had a reason for putting it there. Can you guess the scene? You tend to leave us standing on the doorstep all day. We're drenched. I've gone and caught a sniffle. When Indiana Jones puts on the bad Scottish accent and you know to get in the door with Elsa and wearing his hat and all that. We're here to view the tapestries. No shit. It seems that Vivalsborg Castle was furnished with all kinds of relics. It was, it was intended to be a post-World War II Nazi Aryan Atlantean Vatican type of thing, like a, a Nordic Vatican for Germany. Kind of cool, too bad it was you know being put together by a bunch of evil fuckers. But it was, for that reason, well stocked with relics. Every time the Germans found... Uh, you know, priceless art and shit. They would take it there. It was like a, a ceremonial. It was a showpiece for the bigwigs in the Nazi part in the Third Reich. Um, apparently, they had quite a collection of paintings, carpets, and tapestries. Mister Spielberg. Mr. Play Mountain, how much are you playing with this? Well, like Dr. Jones, I'm going to doggedly search and figure it out. Like your other film, Close Encounters, another Play Mountain. Mean, it, your work means something. It's important. dun da dun da Motherfucker. Yippee ki yay, motherfucker. Well, I'm glad I didn't record those commentaries two weeks ago. Right, you know, right after the first one. Intuition told me, Metachlorians told me, wait, the information will be there. And there it is. How do I know when to record? I will know. I'm in touch with my blood. I'm in touch with the cosmos. This an biological antenna, this node on the planet, this node of consciousness on this biological sphere has been well divested of all the crud and crust and calcification like your pineal gland has. I purged it of fluoride. Well, I purged my whole life of every distraction, every bit of false gold. And I am tuned in. I will know when it is time to record. And then I'll upload it for you, free. And you can learn. Because that's what this is about. I am just the messenger. The knowledge is yours to do with what you wish. Freedom. Moses setting people free of chains of all kinds. Not with a sword, just with truth. 
throw the knowledge the Carducius at the feet of Pharaoh. And then Papa Bear. Because remember, grain, grain silos, higher consciousness recall, requires relaxation, too. And if you need a more modern priest, uh, Friar Tuck, you're in the bar here, aren't you? I'm thinking 1991 Robin Hood here. This is grain, which any fool can eat, but for which the Lord intended and what divine means of consumption. Let us give praise to our Maker and glory to his bounty by learning about beer. Uh, and don't forget, Cecil B. DeMille buried on the other side of the wall where Moses Heston filmed the release the grain. That's the floor of Solomon's temple where they separate the wheat from the chaff as in the acacia, the sacred psychedelic herb, sacred to the Masons to this day in tradition and what was used to build the Ark of the Covenant. Ah, ah, higher consciousness. Giving the grain to the slaves set them free, not just physically, but on a higher level of consciousness, metaphorically. Yeah, I think I'll have to read, uh, do an esoteric Ten Commandments as well. I think that's uh, kind of required at this point. Uh, At least this time around, I can admit to being a Mason. Last time I had to say DeMille was, and I wasn't. Well, I'm DeMille as well, so this will be fun. Um, moving on to the personal, I guess I'm talking about me. I'm talking about all this, uh, my pet peeves now. And I'm running out of rhymes. And I'm making this up as I go, so I can't be running out. Everything was a bonus. All right, what do I got now? I'm getting kind of weary of reporting on how failed Star Wars is. It's proven my point. 2011, Jessica, everything I said has come true. The fans are now waking up to the atrocities I warned about, but here we are. I wouldn't have wanted to be there knowing where it's gone, but I just want you to know I wasn't crazy not by a long shot um, Not much to comment on those. They speak for themselves, I guess. I can only say as these fans from Geeks and Gamers to Matrix Lord and the others are like, why am I being... You know, I hate Star Wars now. Or uh, Matrix Lord bitching about being banned for the simplest of things. The New World Order is real or shall we say the Nazi world order, because that's what QAnon calls it, and I think that's more accurate. New sounds positive. Not It's actually a misnomer. It's an old world order. A very old world order. As Sala would say, it is as if the pharaohs have returned. I'm glad I'm watching Stargate. The Stargate TV show, by the way, I thought. Yeah, I'd say the, uh, the Gould are a good metaphor for the big club, the Illuminati, if you will, the world controllers. Not literally, but just metaphorically it works. Um, you're all... I feel sorry for the geek culture, because that was my former world until they didn't give a shit if I died, so I can't really feel too sorry for them, but that was my world, even if I was banished from it. Yeah, I was banished by PTS. For seven years, I haven't been able to enjoy the culture I grew up with. All the Marvel movies, couldn't watch them. Haven't been to the theater in years. Just, I should have shared these with people I grew up with. I was promoting those back in the, I've been promoting Marvel since the 80s. <laughs> it's like, I told Jessica all about it, and then here's the movies, and then I'm not there. And 
that's gone. It's lost. It'll never can't see them in the theaters with you know you can't share them. But then it's owned by communists, so I wouldn't want to. It's very bizarre. Bittersweet doesn't begin to describe it, which is why I take hours um, out of your day every few days to piss and moan about it. But nah, I'm really at peace in many ways that people wouldn't understand. I know what I have to do, and I'm doing it. It's not where I... Well, it's like Moses. Moses thought he was going to build Egyptian cities and be Pharaoh and the leader of armies and slave master, and then he ended up being his dude and with a staff and the farmer and... Oh, yeah, and he talked to God. Luke Skywalker wanted to go to the Academy. Didn't quite work out the way he wanted, but it was probably for the best. So, it hurts. It's like Indiana Jones says, it's not the years, it's the mileage. But I know what I gotta do. My life's just getting started. Um, I'm not sure how much I'll be linking thus the Star Wars stuff in the future. I've proven my point. To dwell on it would be nurturing anger. And that will not that will that will not suit me. That will only weigh me down as I climb higher on the mountain. The spiritual mountain. As far as my coming down physically off the mountain, yeah, that this year is just getting started. I've uh, I use many metaphors to talk, to distill connections with the cosmos down into a language. Metaphors are helpful. Another one I use often, not to pat myself on the back, but it's just one everyone knows. It's a common language, if you will. Lord of the Rings. I've compared myself with Hollywood to Aragorn. You know, he has a rightful claim to it. Cecil B. DeMille, Brother DeMille, was the father of Hollywood. I've already been there and back. But, uh, like Aragorn, I much prefer the tavern up here in the north with the good booze and the better company. But at some point, I might have to go back down there and kick some ass, you know what I mean? And, uh, it's not so much something I want to do, but, yeah, I think I've said enough. Coming down off the mountain is a matter of showing up physically in some cases. Moses to Pharaoh, Skywalker to Palpatine, Aragorn. Well, Denethor didn't wait around, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> uh, What else was interesting? Now, a few interesting things to end. Um, WrestleMania. I have to mention WrestleMania. I did not watch it. Um, I'm just not into entertainment anymore. It's night. It's like uh, watching Star Wars fail. It's WWE succeeds. It's nice that I always told everyone wrestling is the thing, and they didn't listen. Well, WrestleMania is on top and NFL is struggling. Donald Trump is president. Where's the NFL Hall of Famer in there? It proves my point at everything I said my whole life. I knew what I was talking about. And that doesn't mean that, oh, well, okay, well, it ends. No, it doesn't end here. Like I said, life is just beginning. Everything's been training. If I have that much of a track record of being right, even as a little know-nothing kid... Imagine what I can do with training, with refinement, 
with seven years of discipline? Or how did seven years, how did DeMille speak to, Mo, uh, narrate for Moses? Till the metal was ready for the maker's hand. I take, I, I'm content and I take some comfort in knowing that I could see the way things were going to go. Wrestling is as mainstream as anything. I don't need to watch it. I know it's there. In Hollywood, damn you. I'm enjoying watching you fall. Uh, now, there are a few things I regret not watching with Wrestle uh, that I missed, if you will. Maybe I'll Netflix WrestleMania when it hits DVD or something. But of course, I was curious to see Ronda Rousey debut, just to see what her ring style was like. I wanted to see what sort of maneuvers she would use. You know, would she just go with punches and kicks, or would she do try and do like clotheslines or pile drivers or jump off the top rope or whatever? I mean, that just is an interesting concept. Rowdy Ronda Rousey, badass, highest paid UFC competitor, women or men, and now she's gonna be jump. I guess she was always in spandex, but in spandex jumping off the top rope, and I'm like. I want to see that, <laughs> but I didn't. Not worth slapping down 50 or 60 or 100 bucks or whatever the fuck WrestleMania costs now. I'll wait for Netflix. Um, Undertaker returns and squashes John Cena in th less than three. Less than three minutes! <laughs> yeah! Uh, I'm, a, I'm assuming that's just because Undertaker at his age and how beat up he is probably doesn't want to go more than three minutes or it's going to hurt besides give the crowd something to wow about and next year they'll wonder if he'll show up again which he probably will but uh pretty hypocritical of anyone praising it because you bitched on ultimate warrior back at wrestlemania 12 for doing the same thing to mr hunter hurst helmsley at his first wrestlemania but um, I don't know how I feel about Undertaker being back. I guess I'm not surprised, but I'm a little disappointed. He didn't really say he was retiring after 33, and he certainly came back for Monday. Once he came back for Monday Night Raw's 25th anniversary, I was, oh, I'd be surprised if we don't see him at WrestleMania. But what disappointed me was the missed opportunity. Undertaker's going to come back and squash John Cena. Fine. That's great. But he just comes back wearing the same old black. No, 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 no. Come on. Vince, last WrestleMania, Illuminati WrestleMania 33, the hat man in black, Undertaker took off his gloves and hat and set them in the ring and left them there. It was like he's... It's like even if The Undertaker is a supernatural character, he, he was relinquishing the mantle. Like when someone else takes up the, the Iron Man suit or the Batman suit, you know, he, his time has passed and maybe someone will find the hat in the future and gain the powers of The Undertakers. I don't know. But he should have come back looking different. And I, the only way I could see him ever have, having come back should have been, and now it's not been done, he should have come back in the classic gray and black. Like he first showed up in 1990 Survivor Series with the gray gloves, the gray tie, and the gray spats. It's a little too cartoony for nowadays, but it's Undertaker. I think people will forgive him. It would just be cool. And of all people, you've already signed Brother Love Bruce Pritchard to your own radio show, Vince, because something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard is something is, with Conrad is such a hit. So now there's something else to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard 
on WWE. Okay, whatever. How very Hollywood of you, Vince, to just copycat. What you should have done with Brother Love? Fucking wasted opportunity. Who introduced Undertaker to the World Wrestling Federation? Brother Love and Ted DiBiase. Since it wasn't announced, it was a surprise anyway. You should have had Brother Love reintroduce Undertaker and put over the Something to Wrestle With podcast. I mean, come on, why not? Have John Cena come to the ring and say something. Do it as a comical bit. Since it's going to be a squash anyway, do it as a comical bit. Have John Cena come out to the ring and say something like, have him interview Conrad Thompson. Have Con- Come on, give him a moment. He's incredible publicity. He's even got me interested again. That's hard to do. He's probably got so much business for you, Vince. He's such free p- PR for you. Give him a spot at WrestleMania. Why? Don't even need to be a payday. I don't think he would want one. He'd be happy just to be there. Have Conrad come... Have John Cena come to the ring. The crowd's pumped. And have, and have John Cena say... There's this new phenomenon in wrestling. Is this is this radio show something? To, and we got Conrad Thompson here in the front row of the audience. You know, you don't need him to come down the aisle. Just have him point out in the crowd, give him a guest seat. You know, the crowd will. You might get a minor pop or something, but the crowd. You know, if not, just give it a plug. You're going to give him your own radio show anyway. Plug the hell out of it. This has been so. Have John Cena say this has been so successful that he's you know going to get his own show on WWE. You know, why don't you come in the ring, Conrad, and do a bow or something. It, it, something like that. It, and then have Conrad, kayfabe, nervous, like, mess up a line, say something. Have John Cena, like, when are you going to do a show on me? And have Conrad say something, well, there's not that much interest in you. You're, something like that, where it just gets a little heat, a little bit of pushy Chevy. And then Bruce, Pr- Bruce Pritchard... Um, of course, everyone's waiting for him to show up, but he, Brother Love comes out. And he's like, I'm going to break this up. Y'all need to love and have him actually come down the aisle with the music and the lights and the whole show. And then he comes down. Y'all know we all can do this together and blah, 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 blah. For some reason, people want John Cena to go heel anyway. Come on. Have John Cena start beating up Conrad and Brother Love. And then have Undertaker come out and beat the shit out of John Cena. <laughs> and have him come out in his classic, original, as Brother Love found him, gray and black. That would have been cool. But that's how I would have booked it. But that's their show. I will book it my way in my own book. Not just my wizard's log here, but my books. You see, synchronously, remember a couple wizard's logs ago when I said I got eye strain from editing 50 pages straight of my novel, book six, that is, of my series? I haven't mentioned that in a while. For those of you that are new here, I'm revising my books that I wrote in the early 90s. After 20 years of life experience, I'm keeping the content, the names, characters, sequences. I'm just improving the vocabulary and the narrative, polishing the narrative. Because I copyrighted them in 95, and they're a tale of synchronicity unto themselves. Everything that's going on in them mirrors reality. Just another example of how weird uh, things are. Anyway, when I finished editing those 50 pages a couple about a week ago, and I'm still recovering from the eye strain, <laughs> had bloodshot eye for like two days. Um, not from not weed bloodshot. I mean like blood vessel kind of burst red in the eye type of thing. Yeah, you. It's healing. That chapter 12, book six, ends with the return of the highwayman who um, because he's returning from darkness and is finding some virtue is wearing slight bits of gray on his gloves and his 
boots. But for the most part, he's still wearing a black highwayman's trench coat, cloak, and a black wide brim fedora. You get the idea. After months of putting it off, almost six months of putting it off, I get back to writing. And uh, the man in black, the undertaker, shows up, and then he should, the next day almost, he shows up. I wasn't even thinking of when WrestleMania was. It wasn't on my mind. I just wrote because I was inspired to write. Cosmos told me to. And then art imitates life, and there he is again. I thought I was making this shit up, but you can't just make this shit up. Remember, these stories I copyrighted long ago, so it's not like I can be making it up now. 1995 was the copyright. I'm just doing the polish. Um, a few other notes. Uh, Shout-outs. I guess that's the term. I'm not used to doing that, but I say thanks. I give thanks. Thanksgiving. It's Thanksgiving here. <laughs> um, uh, thanks to Jana on Facebook. A few people have connected with me, or I've connected with a few people. There was this alternate email thing I didn't know existed. Some I find emails from months and like a year ago, and I'm like, oh shit. I really don't use social media folks, so if I ignore something, it's not that I'm ignoring it. I don't know it's there. I don't know, know about all these different filters and boxes and things to go check. I, I know how social media works about as well as I know how to fix a car. You put the key in the ignition, it turns on, you hit the gas pedal. If it came to changing the engine, I wouldn't know where to start. All these different folders that mail and messages get filtered into, I don't even know they exist to check them. Anyway, um, apparently it was Jana who got me to go on the Opperman report a while back. And I'm sorry it's late, but credit, thank you. Even though I can't say I, um, I don't think Opperman liked me <laughs> that much, uh, my being a Trump supporter. I, uh, I'm a appreciative of the chance that anyone thought well enough of me that I should be heard and that I was given the chance to be heard so thank you thank you and I'm glad you listen and you you like what's going on so um uh, thank you um another shout out this is getting dangerous it's like uh now, I've said before, I don't ever want to get so big or busy that I can't re respond to everyone, but um, it's weird responding to anyone, because I, I really haven't that much over the years. I, I get feedback from three people, and I don't know what to do. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, Brother J, Brother J, fellow mason i only use first names i don't use last names here so people are safe you don't if i say something too provocative you don't have to be lumped into it you know who you are anyway uh two two things brother jay first of all uh well three three of course three mm. but thanks you know why but also um Thanks for pointing me out, pointing out to me, May Brussel or Brussel. Well, what? If you're a conspiracy person, you might have heard the name. Apparently, she's a lady who did a whole bunch of radio shows way back in the 70s and the 80s, exposing the new world, the Nazi world order, and all the stuff that we talk about now. I think I've come across her once or twice. I recognized the picture of her, but I, I didn't. I don't know her. Anyway, Brother Jay and I got to talk, and he's like, what do you think of Mae Brussel? And I'm like, I don't know. And so he says I should go look at this. So I'm starting to. So there's one link that I've looked at so far. 
uh, listening to her one hour of her, you know, one of her shows, and I'm, I'm going to listen to a lot more. So far, it's, I'm liking what I hear. I don't even hear someone in the 1970s, frankly. It's, it's disturbing how current she sounds from a pre-Star Wars world. This recording I listened to was from January of 77, four months before we ever were introduced to Luke Skywalker. Think about that. And she's talking about shit that's going on now. So I'm like, whoa. Okay, you have my attention, definitely. But she's she's got a lot of material, so it's going to be... Those links are just going to dump into the, probably the paranormal sections where I'll start dumping them. But I'm putting them at the end here for now because the last few links is the place of honor. The, the end is the place of honor. So thanks to Jana and Jay for uh, res- respective contributions to my knowledge. My knowledge base. Anyway, so... Um, very interesting. It, it reminds me of when I discovered... Um, William Cooper, the late William Cooper's work, Mystery Babylon shows, and I back in 2011, 12, 13 ish, I was listening to those, smoking lots of dope. Fascinating, just incredible. Take me away and let me go, you know. Who needs television in Hollywood when you got that? So I'm in, I'm look, I'm excited. It has the same feeling, May Brussels shows. I'm looking forward to delving into those. And the other, so thank you for that. And the other thing about Brother Jay is um, he started up his own YouTube channel where he's smoking weed and talking. He's the headless smoker. And I think he's hilarious. I think you're hilarious, Brother Jay. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed your, your links. So I'm just putting that there as a uh, check him out and have a good laugh and have a good smoke. I think I'll do both. Why not? I guess that's it for now. As always, the links are in the description box. Feel free. I encourage you to explore them beyond what I provide, since I don't link everything everyone says. Uh, Go to them, go to their channel, and formulate your own opinion. I just give you the ones I think are worth our very limited hours in the day while I waste uh, a lot of it babbling and smoking I would call that a waste though and apparently you don't either because you're still here but unfortunately this little foray into my madness has come to an end and I bid you well I'm going to waste a little bit more time as I finish getting my bone ready here aha not wasted it leads to good inspiration good wisdom and thus a better life so thank you for making it worthwhile by listening and in your own travels and adventures and trials and tribulations temptations and pain just remember Be truthful, honest, virtuous, and the source will be with you.